join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. Norbert Rilieu, a name that history has too often allowed to remain in the margins, was born in 1806 in New Orleans at a time when the city pulsed with contradictions. It was a place of wealth and decadence, yet also of suffering and inequality. In this environment, a child of mixed race, legally classified as a free person of color, would go on to become one of the most brilliant engineers of the 19th century. His work revolutionized the sugar refining industry, creating processes so ingenious and efficient that they forever altered the course of industrial production. Yet what makes Rilieu's story especially remarkable is not simply the transformation he brought to sugar processing, but the way his intellectual genius shone from childhood onward, revealing a mind destined to challenge limits that society tried so hard to impose on him. To appreciate the depth of Norbert Rilieu's genius, one must first understand the world he was born into. New Orleans in the early 19th century was a city like no other in America. It was French in language and culture, Spanish in architecture and tradition, and deeply tied to African and Caribbean roots through the forced labor of enslaved people and the presence of free people of color. The sugar industry was the lifeblood of Louisiana's economy, with vast plantations along the Mississippi River producing the white gold that sweetened the tables of Europe and the Americas. But refining sugar was both dangerous and inefficient. Workers toiled in boiling rooms filled with scalding kettles, choking steam, and the constant threat of deadly explosions. The process was crude and brutal, wasting both labor and raw material. It was into this world that young Norbert, a child born into privilege as the son of a wealthy white planter and his black mother, grew up surrounded by the realities of both opportunity and oppression. Even as a boy, Norbert displayed signs of intellectual brilliance that could not be ignored. His father, Vincent Rilieu, recognized his son's unusual gifts and provided him access to education that many children of African descent could only dream of. From an early age, Norbert showed a fascination with mechanics and systems. Observers noted how he would disassemble toys, watches, and simple household objects, only to put them back together with improvements or alterations. His childhood was marked by this restless curiosity, a refusal to accept that things must be done as they always had been. He looked at machinery not with fear or confusion, but with an analytical eye that sought patterns, efficiency, and perfection. At a time when most children of his background would have been denied the chance for advanced learning, Norbert was sent to France, where he studied at the prestigious École Centrale in Paris. This was an institution known for cultivating engineers and inventors who would shape the industries of Europe and beyond. While still a teenager, he immersed himself in the study of mechanical engineering, physics, and chemistry. He distinguished himself as one of the youngest students ever to enroll, and his peers marveled at the quiet but confident young man from Louisiana who seemed to see engineering problems not as obstacles but as puzzles to be solved. His instructors noted his precision, his ability to visualize processes, and his habit of questioning existing methods with the intention of finding something better. What makes the story of Norbert Rilieu especially compelling is how his childhood interests evolved into world-changing innovations. While studying in France, he was exposed to the growing field of steam technology. The early 19th century was an age of steam, and inventors across Europe and America were experimenting with ways to harness heat and pressure for industrial use. Norbert quickly grasped that the key to progress lay in controlling temperature and pressure with exact precision. This insight would later become the foundation of his greatest invention. When he returned to Louisiana, the contrast between the advanced knowledge he had gained abroad and the outdated methods of sugar refining he found at home must have been striking. Sugar, despite being one of the wealthiest industries in the state, was still processed using the so-called Jamaica train method, a series of open kettles in which cane juice was boiled in stages. The process was not only inefficient but also incredibly dangerous, requiring enslaved laborers to stand over open flames, exposed to the risk of burns, explosions, and death. Much of the sugar was lost to impurities and overheating, and the human cost was staggering. To a young engineer like Rilieu, the waste, 
both material and human, must have appeared intolerable. Out of this dissatisfaction emerged the multiple effect evaporator, Rilua's brilliant solution to the problems of sugar refining. His system involved a series of vacuum-sealed chambers in which cane juice could be boiled at lower temperatures, allowing for greater efficiency, safety, and purity. By using the vapor from one chamber to heat the next, he created a continuous process that dramatically reduced fuel consumption and increased output. It was nothing short of revolutionary, saving the sugar industry millions of dollars while sparing countless workers from needless suffering. Yet while the invention itself came during his adult years, its roots lay in his childhood habits of observation and experimentation, his lifelong pursuit of perfection, and his refusal to accept that dangerous inefficiency was simply the way things had to be. The genius of Norbert Rilieu can also be measured in the fact that his invention went beyond sugar. The multiple effect evaporator became a model for other industries, influencing processes in the production of paper, soap, and even in modern chemical engineering. His insight into how to manipulate heat and pressure safely and efficiently was a gift to the world, one that carried the unmistakable signature of his childhood brilliance. But as with so many black inventors in the 19th century, Rilieu's story is also one of obstacles. The very society that benefited enormously from his genius often refused to fully acknowledge him. Racism limited his recognition in Louisiana where his status as a free man of color subjected him to prejudice and social exclusion. He faced resistance from plantation owners who, while eager to profit from his invention, did not always wish to celebrate its inventor. Yet even these barriers could not diminish the magnitude of what he achieved. His work spoke for itself, and in time, his name became synonymous with progress in sugar refining. Looking back, one sees the threads of Norbert Rilieu's story stretching from his curious childhood in New Orleans, through his intellectual blossoming in Paris, to his revolutionary contributions in the world of engineering. His life is a testament to the power of imagination and the refusal to accept limitations, whether imposed by tradition or by prejudice. His childhood was not simply a prelude to his adult achievements. It was the crucible in which his genius was formed nurtured, and made unstoppable. In telling the story of Norbert Rilieu as a child prodigy who grew into a man of world-changing accomplishments, we are reminded that genius often announces itself early, but it requires the right conditions to flourish. He had the fortune of education and opportunity, but he also carried the burden of racial prejudice. Despite these challenges, he left behind a legacy that reshaped industries and set the stage for the modern world. His childhood, filled with curiosity, experimentation, and an insatiable drive to improve, gave rise to inventions that saved lives, advanced science, and stood as monuments to the boundless possibilities of the human mind. Today, Norbert Rilieu's name deserves to be spoken alongside those of the great inventors of the 19th century. His work was not only about machinery or sugar. It was about creating a world where science and engineering could improve human life, reduce suffering, and demonstrate the brilliance that emerges when a child's genius is nurtured rather than stifled. His story, like the sugar he refined, is both sweet and complex, a reminder that history's most transformative figures often come from the very margins where society least expects them to arise.